Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. You find me in Scotland as part of my adventure with the F-Type R. I'm here for a fairly specific reason, well, actually maybe two reasons. First of which is to drive on the UK's highest road. With all the Covid lockdowns and lack of international travel over the last year or so, I miss road trips and I miss driving on mountain passes. So I thought I'd have a go at the UK's version of a mountain pass, which is a road here in Scotland. The other reason I'm here, well, I'll share that with you when I get to the road. Uh, why am I waking up at 4am to go and drive on this road? Well, firstly, don't all good drives start early. Secondly, I realised a couple of days ago in the Peak District that roads are pretty busy at the moment, so I thought I'd get out before the majority of the tourist traffic does. Uh, and thirdly, there's a storm coming at lunchtime, so my best chance at some dry weather is to leave right now. Might be a premature move, but you only live once, right? <laughs> I did say I, I always wanted to drive this car with the roof down. Uh, I feel somewhat sort of invigorated after that petrol stop. I'm not really sure why, but it's given me a second wind. And I'll tell you what, if you're ever looking for sort of motivation to get up early for a drive, hopefully part of this video will be just that. Because honestly, it is so good driving when the roads are so empty especially in the summer when it's when it's light because doing this in the winter is not quite the same but yeah the minute the sun starts to rise at 4 5 a.m just get up and do it because it just makes driving a car so much more enjoyable i mean it's 5 5 30 now and i'm starting to see a few other cars pop up here and there but in, in the most part I hardly see anyone so it's like get out and kind of do what i want where i want and maximize the experience i'm having with the f type anyway i'm still about 40 minutes away from the UK's highest road, Canwell Pass in the Cairngorms National Park. I think I've got that all right. I am still a little bit groggy. Whilst the petrol station was open, the actual shop wasn't. So I was hoping to get myself a coffee or a Red Bull or something. Wasn't able to do that. So yeah, need to need to do some fast driving to really get the uh, the old blood pumping. But wow, this is pretty. Not really sure where I am, but it's lovely. starting to get very good. 
I'll be honest, the roof did go up briefly as we kind of passed through the first layer of cloud, uh, but it's holding off now whilst the road itself is very, very wet. I'm not that wet, so yeah, the roof is back down once again. And oh, not only is the scenery mega, but oh, the road itself is turning out to be a complete gem. That's why I didn't really know I knew that the views would be good but I didn't know whether the actual road itself would be fun to drive because often the two don't mix. Very scenic roads aren't always great driving roads, if that makes sense. And yeah, if you got stuck behind a, a caravan up here, you'd be screwed, hence why there's another benefit to coming so early. Perfect kind of road for this car, honestly. Especially with this new steering, it's just so direct. Just got to be careful of a few of these blind crests on a day like today. And lambs, by the way, you've got to be careful of lambs. If you come in springtime, just keep in the back of your mind that there could be the odd lamb that's got confused between where its field ends and the road starts because I have had to sort of do some minor avoiding action. One thing I'll just feed back on is that. Because the, uh, the soundtrack is somewhat muted and compared to what the F-Type used to be, I find myself shifting down early quite a lot. Because I'm used to audibly getting so much noise. When it goes quiet, I think, oh, I must be low down in the revs. So I shift down and then I find out that actually I wasn't that low down in the revs. Just there wasn't a lot of noise. There wasn't a lot of uh, sound accompanying my driving. <laughs> So worth the early start. Welcome then to the top of the highest road in the UK. I have made it and it has been so worth it. Uh, that over there you might be able to see in the background is the Glenshee Ski Centre which sits atop of the Cairnwell Pass. Yes we do ski in the UK, foreign viewers might be like what? But it does genuinely happen. Um, you might be able to see there's some chairlifts behind me. I think they have 36 runs here at the Glenshee Ski Centre. It's not the most impressive skiing you've ever seen but it is still skiing and yeah today's drive has just been exactly what I wanted it to be because in the UK it is quite hard to kind of find incredible quiet roads okay fine I have woken up early to sort of make the most of the quiet roads but I have heard that you know throughout the year you don't have a lot of traffic coming up here especially in the winter because it's all just covered in snow but when you go down to the south of France or Italy or Germany parts of Spain Portugal etc it's very easy to find a great road with no one else on it, but I just feel like I haven't been able to do that for so long. As epic as the trip was in the 360 to Yorkshire, we were always bumping into traffic. There's always people around and the roads are narrow and tight. As you would have seen from some footage just a second ago, the road up until this point has been incredible and I haven't even been down the other side yet. God knows what is that way in this car. It's just perfect for this kind of drive with the roof down taking in the scenery and the elements but also enjoying just how good that thing is absolutely epic now i do see a sign for a cafe over there and it is about 6 30 and i still haven't had any breakfast so i'm gonna go and see if that's open i highly doubt it keep our fingers crossed and then yeah just keep driving up and down this road because why not i would say this looks fairly closed Oh no, it's Thursday. Oh, oh no, why? Why?
I've turned off the main road because I saw a rather inviting road off to the side and thought, why not? One of my favourite parts of exploring is taking the sort of the lesser trodden path or, or inviting roads off to the side. And this might go nowhere, but ugh, we're only going to find out by going down it. And the main road's just over there. I can still see it, so I'm not exactly going to get that lost. Um, Funnily enough, this side of Glenshee, the road becomes a lot more sort of flowy. It's wide, long sweeping bends where on the way up, uh, it was a lot more sort of tight and twisty and undulating. But yeah, lots of speed this side of the, uh, of the peak, let's say. Uh, not a lot of speed here though, because <laughs> it is single track and I'm just pottering along, not really knowing what to find or what to expect. What is that? Is this an old, oh, that's an old mine. Oh, no way. Oh no, or a landslide? I don't know, let's get out of here, that looks weird. <laughs> Hello, what do we have here? The Fife Arms, if a man in a four, <gasps> and there's a bloody Portofino, and okay, right, I know I'm having breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> to say it is super interesting seeing these two next to each other. I often say that the new F-Type looks a bit like the Ferrari Roma, but of course the convertible F-Type, more of a direct comparison against the Portofino because that's a convertible too, but just hard top instead. Uh, super nice spec this one on the left. I mean spec'd up, there's probably a hundred grand price difference between these two cars, the Portofino obviously being more expensive. I think I'm pretty happy with where I'm at, but I mean it is a Ferrari and that one does look nice. He's also been very brave with his parking, this guy, look at that. Really uh, taking a bit of taking a bit of curb there, but it does look lovely. If anything's gonna tempt me out of an F-Type today, it would be a Ferrari. Hmm. Well, I promise you that was totally unplanned, but absolutely mega, the most delicious breakfast. And you know, it's all I've been talking about all morning is having a coffee and something to eat, and then I come across the Fife Arms. Anyway, I did tease earlier, and actually even earlier in the week, that there was a sort of pretty specific reason why I wanted to come up here and drive this road. Not just because it is the highest road in the UK. And some of you would have uh, figured this out, but this is actually the exact road that Jeremy Clarkson drove the F-Type on for the very first time on Top Gear. It was a V6S, a convertible like this one, and it really was the start of my love affair with this car because I remember seeing that piece thinking, that thing just looks amazing. And what I would do to be able to jump in one of those and blast around whatever roads he's driving on. And so to come here today, to have relatively good weather, and to be in this car, it's okay, fine. It's, it's not my car, but it's, it's my car for now. It's honestly so good. And the road has lived up to all of my, you know, my hopes, my dreams, my aspirations. And so has the car. So driving this car on this road, it's just been perfection. And the best thing is to get back to my hotel, I gotta do it all over again. Up and over. <laughs> Amazing!